Now we're going to get into the environmental protection part of it. Like you know, was saying, we're, we're kind of like on this kind of cruising through all the different issues. And we know you got a lot of questions and discussions, and we're going to try to get to those later, but we wanted to get all these folks to speak first. So doing this part of it is going to be a few people that are personal friends of mine. One, Audrey Wong. She's a panel member and uh, will serve as sort of the moderator or lead and share her experience as a member of the Torrance Refinery Action Alliance. People live on the South Bay. Anybody live on the South Bay? Oh, good. Okay, good. Yeah, you know that the uh, uh, refiner that explodes every other year, right? So uh, we got to do something like that's very dangerous. You know, you can have that bow ball type of thing going on, you know, with the, uh, the, the cloud of poison that kind of drifts all the way outward five miles. Um, she's going to be joined by a, a couple of people. One is uh, Dr. Dean Toji. Uh, Dean's co-chair of the Environmental Justice Committee, Asian Pacific Policy and Planning Council, and also he's a member of the Science Advisory Committee for Long Beach Climate Action Adoption Plan, also a teacher at Cal State Long Beach and a personal friend of mine for many years. Uh, Jan Victor Andasan is a member of the AP, um, A3PCON Environmental Committee, and he's the lead organizer for East Art Communities for Environmental Justice. And David Toyoshima, who is an artist, and actually he grew up across the street from a refinery, so he wanted to share some of his personal views as not just a sort of a victim, but actually a resistor and fighter against the uh, pollution. And uh, so, Audrey? Can you just go first? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Loud enough without the microphone? It helps. Yeah. It helps? Okay. Uh, I'm a little bit awkward with that. So, <laughs> so uh, our, our committee is a volunteer committee. It's part of the APCON organization. It's about 40 or 50 community organizations, service organizations. We're a volunteer committee. Louder. Louder. Use the mic. Use the microphone. Thanks. It's a volunteer committee. Is this on? Yes, it is. Yeah. It's a volunteer committee, so we are involved in There's three coaches, so I'm not like the chair. Uh, I changed the title there. It says, the, your program says Protect the Environment. I added four. The mic closer. There you go. It's a, the, your program says Protect the Environment. I added for the people, because that more reflects what we're trying to do. So environmental justice, I thought I would start a little bit by, what do we mean by environmental justice? I think the justice part I don't have to explain. Everybody understands that. But when you say environment, there's a lot of ideas and images out there, but there's a particular way that the environmental justice movement thinks about the environment. Let me see if this works. Okay. Uh, there's a saying that we use a lot, the environment is where we live, work, and play. We're talking about residences in our communities. We're talking about jobs, both clean and safe workplaces, but also having decent jobs that pay well and play. That's everything else, right? From just straight up recreation to culture. Sometimes people will add where we study and where we pray. So we're talking about schools, we're talking about worship, we're talking about cultural and spiritual activities. So it's people's lives, it's our lives. I think sometimes if you look at the mainstream environmental movement, the environment is like over there, you know, magnificent scenery, great animals and all that, and of course it is. But our focus is on our lives, to have clean, safe, good places to live and carry out our lives. We're focused on people. So, the environmental justice movement didn't come about because the environmental movement reached out to people of color. It was people of color movements that started to recognize and incorporate environment as part of their issues, the safety and the health of their communities, etc. cetera. Uh, the same is throughout the environmental movement, the same for us. Uh, for the Asians and Pacific Islanders involved, it comes out of a long uh, experience of working for our communities. Uh, so for one example, so for example, we're in the JACCC, right? Uh, it was originally, at one point, it was getting hijacked by Japanese corporations and American corporations based in LA. They wanted to make it the Japan America Cultural Center and use it to highlight elite Japanese culture to push it on the corporate agenda. And we had to fight to make it a community center. And I'm not the only one. I think, raise your hands if you were involved in that or knew about it. Marcus, right? So we fought for that. We moved in people to take places and we took it. Okay, so that's why we're meeting here today. So 
the environmental thing. It's just taking on yet another issue that affects the people's lives. So there's a couple of main issues that we focus on. Climate change and how it affects everybody in the world, including us, and fighting for climate justice and toxic air pollution. We'll get into each of those in a moment. Uh, here is some of the things we, were do we have been doing. Okay, so we worked on Standing Rock. This is a couple of years ago. We raised money. We sent folks out to Standing Rock, out, out to Washington, D.C., and to the White House. Yeah. 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 No, I didn't go to Washington. I went to Standing Rock. Standing Rock. So I don't know if any of the folks from that were set up. Water protectors? Water protectors? Okay. So we've done things like that. So everybody knows about the hurricanes and the typhoons, right? Uh, we hear a lot about Hurricane Florence, or Hurricane Hong Kong, uh, or Hong uh, is bigger. It has hit the Philippines this week, it's heading for Hong Kong. A lot of these things are coming down now, right? Uh, people remember Hurricane uh, Typhoon Haiyan or Yolanda? Yolanda? Hi. Yeah, so I think, a especially Filipino community, everybody raised money to help out. So this direct experience with that, you know. And I think people know about their ancestral homes for places where maybe you came from or your parents and grandparents. And it's terrible there. The kind of heat waves and the floods and all of that are worse than what we're having. We're starting to get a taste of what the rest of the world has been feeling and Asia has been feeling a, re a lot. So we've worked on climate marches. Is it easier if we just say next slide? Sure. Yeah. Oh, could you go back one? Okay. So we've done climate much as things like that. Uh, we know that the main cause of global warming is the greenhouse gases that are put out by fossil fuels, right? And we keep putting them out, putting them out, and it gets worse and worse. And the question was like, who would do a thing like that? Next slide. <laughs> Our old friends, right? Uh, 90 corporate entities are responsible for two-thirds of the greenhouse gas emissions. So it's really a small group of organizations that, that have been doing that. Uh, next slide, please. And that's another way to look at it. Maybe we'll pass this around so we get a better view of it. Uh, we'll move on to toxic uh, air pollution. David, you want to come up? This is David Toyoshima. Oh, sure. Hi. <laughs> I'm Dave Toyoshima, and I, uh, I live in the South Bay. I live in Long Beach, West Long Beach. Um, and I'll, I'll read a little bit of what I prepared for today. Um, I can be show the first slide. And they're like, aw, who's that? Aww. Aww. <laughs> That's me and my dad. So I grew up in the thick, smoky haze in the red glow of Wilmington's refineries in the 710 freeway. And you can see right back there. This is in the early 50s and 60s. And that's the Long Beach Freeway. And we're right up next to it. And there's only one car there. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Isn't that amazing? Um, and a little bit of history. When World War II ended and Japanese Americans were permitted, permitted to leave internment camps, my dad and mom were to internment camps, uh, most individuals and families had little place to go. They couldn't return home. Their homes were gone. They sold them. Their farms, businesses, uh, sold for pennies on the dollar. In Southern California, the U.S. government opened temporary resettlement uh, shelters, barracks, trailers, uh, low-income apartments. Uh, my mom and family lived, uh, uh, went to Heart Mountain, actually. Uh, and um, when they were let out, they moved to uh, trailer parks. And actually, there's a place called Truman Boyd Manor. It's in the west uh, end of Long Beach. Um, now, why, why there? Why in the west end of Long Beach? Well. A lot of parts of Long Beach and a lot of parts of Southern California were, had these uh, anti-Japanese sentiment. It was still, you know, big deal after World War II. So uh, West Long Beach was a uh, place where a lot of poor families lived. Uh, they were accept uh, acceptance of, uh, of poor families. So um, the Navy was there. Um, uh, so when my family were looking for homes, uh, 
be settled there. And since, again, since the er, let's see, in its early days, the west side was, it's, if you don't know it, it's bounded by the 710 freeway, uh, the refineries, and the port to the south. Um, it's, a, it's a place that continues to you know, be a home to a lot of Asian Americans and Asian Pacific Islanders. Um, and it continues to be one of the poorest places in town and one of the filthiest. So go to the next slide, I think. Uh, oh, oh, just show, uh, there's one I show, uh, there's a Long Beach Freeway. Yeah, there, okay, so I live, remember that first slide of me and my dad? Well, this is, I think if you're familiar, this is what it looks like today. And I live actually not too far from Anaheim Street, so uh, just, it's like that, it's just a mess. So um, the next slide over. Um, so the pollution, the pollu I mean, every morning when I wake up, there's a thick coat of soot on everything, from the freeways and from the port, from refineries, and what it's doing is basically killing the trees. So this is a picture I took of the persimmon tree in my backyard, my dad's yard, and it's dying. Uh, you can go to the next slide. Okay, so right there, I, I took a piece of paper and I wiped off one of the leaves from the backyard, and you could visibly see the soot. So imagine, breathing that, uh, in, in fact, in taking that into your body. So uh, that gunk is probably in me right now. And I actually, uh, I suffer from asthma. So ever since I was a little ch a kid, so that probably contributed to it. Um, next slide. And so the port, the port of Long Beach in Los Angeles, uh, as, as well as the diesel trucks that come out of there, uh, contribute to CO2, which is global warming, but uh, also other chemicals, dangerous chemicals like uh, nitrogen dioxide, sulfur dioxide, and FD means fine particulate matter. And so that's that gunk that you saw on the, on the leaves, but it's so fine that, it, that we breathe it and it gets into our bloodstream. So it's probably coursing through my veins right now, and who knows, you know, what's, what it's doing to me. So um, the, the dark purple areas are where the higher concentrations are, are, of particulate matter are. Uh, you can obviously see the, the port of Los Angeles and Long Beach uh, over in Torrance. Uh, and that cloud moves into downtown. So downtown Los Angeles, here, we're breathing that stuff right here in, in little Tokyo, in Chinatown. And it, it wafts out, it blows out to Ontario and out into the valley. And, and everywhere that Asian Pacific Islanders live, it, it affects us, so it's, a, it's an important thing. Um, I think there's another PDF. Is there not? Another? Okay, so here's another uh, a tighter inch out of the South Bay area. Port of Long Beach, Torrance, and again, Little Tokyo and downtown Los Angeles. So high concentrations uh, from the port area and along the uh, freeway corridors, the, the 710 and the 110 corridor. So um, again, we, we're living in this, and, and so it's very important that we take this seriously. Um, I do because I have asthma. It's my life. I still live there. And um... two more slides. Oh, next slide, please. Oh. Oh, okay. So we did. So you know, we 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 did something about it. We, at least we we uh, marched it. So there was a planned Tesoro uh, uh, expansion, and so we did uh, get together, and I actually did the. The graphics for that poster there, and we uh, marched uh, against Tesoro. Um, you know, they they got a lot of money behind them, but uh, and of course, you know, these days uh, you know, Trump is rolling back a lot of uh, uh, air quality uh, rules, so uh, uh, it's something that we can all get involved in our. One more slide, and then we can go to the next one. There we are. <laughs> Everybody. I'm Audrey. I live in the South Bay and we get a lot of pollution from the refineries. We also got a WMD in our area and it's called modified hydrofluoric acid or MHF and the Torrance refinery and the Valero refinery in Wilmington uses it. Uh, next slide please. Um, the thing about MHF 
is if it escapes from its tank, it could form a poisonous cloud that can be instant death to hundreds of thousands of people. So this is the area it can affect. But actually, no, no, no. Actually not. Next slide, please. This is with more accurate information. And um, I live around there, around Redondo Beach, in that area. My family with a newborn nephew lives in that area, not to mention a lot of Asians. But I'm not, I'm not just affected. Dean, where do you live? Where do you live, Dean? Point it out. I live there in the death circle. <laughs> <laughs> and my kids go to school there. Hey, Jan, how about you? Um, right above West Carson. Oh, no, I'll go up there, on the 110. Oh, the 110. Yeah. Oh, you're smack dab. Oh, my God, dude, you're like right in the middle. You, you got a boat on one side. The other side. Oh, there. That's okay. all. No, yeah. Oh, you can't escape. You can't yeah. run. You can't hide. Um, David, yeah. David, do you, are you, yeah, where, where, where's yeah, your right little there. circle? David's house. Is anybody else in the circle? Yeah. <laughs> Yay, we're all in the circle. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, so if you want to know what MHF can do to you, uh, some of it is uh, if you have a high enough dose, a high enough dose of MHF, uh, MHF acid, it can be absorbed through your skin, it leaches into your bones, takes out the calcium, it can cause organ failure, um, you know, respiratory failure. It's, it's not good. Um, there was a MHF leak in the 80s in Marathon, Texas, and thousands had to be hospitalized and some people were still feeling the effects years later. Um, so, and the thing is, we could have had the same thing happen in our area in 2015, when there was an explosion, and the explosion threw this huge piece of equipment, like a couple of tons, like within feet of the HF, HF tank. And after hearing that, um, you know, a bunch of citizens wanted to make sure we don't die from such a catastrophic disaster. You know, we don't want to be like vocal. So um, that's how the Torrance uh, Refinery Action Alliance was formed. Um, and the, the thing that really, the thing, you know, even though we do know the consequences of MHF leak, we don't have an adequate evacuation plan. We don't have an adequate emergency plan. Um, what we've been told, including the school teachers, you know, with their classes full of your children, is um, if there is an MHF leak and that poisonous cloud is coming towards you, get inside. Get inside. Shelter in place. This. Take this along the, the doors and the windows, and that'll protect you. This, see this right here? Duct tape. You know, duct tape's supposed to fix everything, right? <laughs> I guess it can like protect you from a from poisonous cloud. Um, but according to some experts, the best way to deal with this threat, just take out the HF, MHF acid altogether. So next slide, please. See this group of people here? Mm -hmm. And then another slide. Yeah, another group. You, you know, you see, you can't get South Lake people out of their home for anything. But they, came, but they came out for a TRAA rally calling for a ban of this HF acid. So that, I mean, that means it, it is something pretty important. So please join us in, um, in calling for a ban. We are asking the Air Quality Management District to please approve a ban or phase out of this acid. Uh, we have enough dangers in the community already, and I can't imagine evacuating the South Bay when a poisonous cloud is coming towards us. And this is, MHF is only a little part, only a little, but a very dangerous part of this whole toxic web. And Jan here is going to explain how everything, all this pollution and, and traffic and everything is all connected. Hi. Okay, we have two minutes, so I'm going to try to do my best. Hi everyone, my name is Jan Victor. I'm a community organizer with East Yard in West Long Beach. And I actually immigrated and grew up in West Long Beach, but I now live in Carson. Um, I don't think I need this since I speak pretty loud, right? Yeah. Um, so 
Uh, yeah, I, I'm gonna just go right to the next slide. So I think we can talk about a refinery um, in Torrance, but one of the biggest, or a refinery that's going through a major expansion right now that's in our community, that's very linked to the Dakota Access Pipeline. It's the fossil fuel fight that everybody's fighting all over the world. Um, is, uh, Tesoro is going through an expansion. And the reason why I introduced this is because fossil fuel, we wouldn't need it if there wasn't a, de a demand for it. And so when we think about like, you know, when you get those images of the 710, you had the trucks, right? Those trucks have to be powered by something. And so um, there's a need for fossil fuel and you can go into, um, actually not the next slide yet. Um, there's a need for fossil fuel to move all these, all these trucks along the 710 corridor, along the 110, all over our um, Southern California. And so for us at ETR, we're fighting industrial pollution by organizing residents. Um, and we've been working with Dean and folks at the AFCON EGC because we need to get off of fossil fuel. And if you go on the next slide, this just briefly shows some of the impacts across all age range, from babies, children, teens, all the way to seniors and pregnant women. Um, and we're gonna go to the next slide, which is the, one of our biggest campaign. This is about the 710 expansion, not this, the north, not the tunnel, but the 710 south expansion where there's a huge black and brown POC community. That's a, um, but there is a large Filipino population in Carson and Long Beach, um, Southeast Asian population in Central Long Beach, um, and Pacific Islanders also in West Long Beach. And we are exposed to that, um, that diesel particulate matter, which is the next slide, um, every day. And that's what um, uh, David was talking about. And the reason why this is important is because it doesn't just stay in Long Beach where the port is going up. Um, this, these, this pollution goes up to 710 and the 110. It hits areas like downtown LA, Chinatown, and also goes to the Inland Valley. And people, the people living right next to all this pollution tend to look like us at the table when they got the yellow sign. So, um, And so um, we're here today because this, you know, fossil fuel, this need, we need to transition out. And it's not just about thinking about renewable technology because it's great, but because people have to live with the impact daily. Um, and, and so if you go on the next slide, um, part of why we're here and talking about this work is because I'm, I'm going to talk a little bit about the top. Yes, there's really great things you can do, like go on a bike and maybe get a hybrid car. But really, we can, create, we can, we can make systems change, right? Like, um, we're working on the ports to get them to go to zero emissions. We're working, um, hopefully, to make the 710 a zero emission freight corridor. Who's actually heard about that? Nobody, right? Well, the 710 is going through this multi-billion dollar expansion, and we hope that it would actually go zero emissions, but they're saying it costs too much, so we should just get used natural gas, which isn't very great just because you put natural gas in it. And so what we're, um, the reason why I'm here, part of my role is, um, is to connect with y'all because this fight is the same fight that's happening in different parts of the country. The, the fossil fuel, this is what's fueling this whole expansion. They need to move products and they want to use fossil fuel. And for us, we know that it's unhealthy because we live there. Like I have asthma, David has asthma, most of my members have asthma, and we see a better option. And so um, at the bottom it says get connected, right? Like you can get connected with our org, but you can also get connected with the EJC. Part of this conversation is actually just learning about the issue and figuring out how you relate to it. And we work with elected officials, but the biggest thing is building this larger movement. And I got the red sign, so I'm gonna um, uh, sign off. But if you're interested in getting involved, I definitely invite y'all to get involved, not just with ETR, but the next slide. Um, you can also connect with us at the EJC because there's still a lot of learning and our API community is being affected. But the first step is just learning about it and then figuring out what we do collectively. Um, so thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Janet. Thank you so much. So, uh, the Soro expansion, right? They're already the number one polluter in all of California, single place, and they want to double it, right? That's not good. And and then all this particular matter is going to Chinatown. There's an article in the LA Times, Chinatown, surrounding area, right? One of the worst. Uh, and then the Long Beach expansion, um, and of course, what Audrey mentioned about the Torrance refinery, and one more, Southern California Industrial Gateway, gateway. gateway. Yeah. scary. Yeah. And briefly, if you can just, yeah. what is that now? Um, it's real briefly. Okay. They want to build a completely new rail yard on LA property across West Long Beach that would bring in about a million new truck trips uh, a year. Yeah. So those four things, those four things, very, very dangerous. Is that right? Yeah. Okay.